Hello and welcome. I'm Mr Cotton and I'm here to talk to you about Year 9 options. Firstly, I would like to say that all the information you require is accessed via the school webpage. However, if you have further questions once you have looked at this, please contact the school office. The process for students starts here. During this time, they'll have information shared in lessons, they'll have discussions with their tutors, and the deadline for submission of their options form is the 6th of March. So what are students aiming for? National performance will be measured on Progress 8. This is a measure based on their 8 best GCSEs, including English and Maths. An average attainment 8 score of 5, including English and Maths, will be required for them to study 3 A-level subjects in Year 12. All students study English, Maths, Combined or Triple Science, Religious Education, a non-foreign language, Personal Health and Social Education, Physical Education plus two further option subjects. There are slight adaptations to the modern foreign language based upon ability. So assessments. Examinations are generally at the end of the course. There are no resits. Retakes are only possible in maths and English. The performance rating of 9 to 1 is now used as opposed to the A star to G. There are specific marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. Um, majority of the subjects have no controlled assessments, although there are a few, and we'll discuss those later, um, plus some courses have non-examination assessment. I'll explain what that means shortly. So coursework, controlled assessment, NEA. Controlled assessment is work that is done throughout the course, which um, is part of the overall grade. It can be up to 60% of the final marks. There are a few subjects listed here which do have controlled assessment. Subjects with non-examined assessments, English, Geography, History and Computer Science, have work that is done throughout the course which is essential, but therefore is tested in the examination at the end of the course. Um, for example, Geography do a field trip, that field trip has to be written up, and the information they learn through doing that field trip then is examined. So what qualification? There are three levels of qualification, Level 1, Level 2, Level 3. Level 1 is entry level, which is below the GCSE, which is done when students might really struggle to access a GCSE course. The majority of the course is done in Key Stage 4 are GCSEs or BTECs. All of these are Level 2 equivalent qualifications. Level 3 is A level, that will be done in Year 12 and 13. So what are the points? The 1 to 9 scale is not an exact conversion from the old GCSE grades, which can be seen in the table to the left. A grade 9 is slightly above the old A star, and when we consider C being a pass, there is now a standard pass and a good pass. The standard pass being a grade 4, and the good pass being a grade 5. Six form entry requirements. An average attainment 8 score of 5, including English and Maths, is needed to access three A-level or equivalent courses. The an average attainment 8 score means they add up eight best GCSEs including English and Maths, divide it by eight and come up with a score. This has to be five or above to access um, three or more level three courses. Students often choose the courses for the wrong reasons, so being clear about why they should or shouldn't choose a course is really important. The reasons they might choose a course is because they're good at it, they think they'll enjoy the course, it links to some career plan that they've got, that the choices that they make fit with other choices really well, um, that it's something they're looking forward to developing more knowledge in and skills in, um, they think they might want to continue studying it after year 11, or they've researched it and shows it will interest and motivate them. However, students should not choose a course because their friends have chosen it. More often than not, they wouldn't be put in classes necessarily with their friends. In the case of geography, there were five geography classes last year, so therefore they could go into any one of those geography classes. They won't necessarily be with their friends. Someone else thinks it's a good idea. Sometimes other people have had a really good experience with a subject and therefore want to push um, a student in a certain direction. It's really important that the student feels that it's in their best interest and the thing that they're going to really excel at when they choose a course. Now like a teacher they have now, um, we cannot guarantee what teacher students get. Um, because they like the teacher now, that's great, but we can't guarantee they'll have the same teacher next year. 
So it's really important that it's the subject they like, not just the teacher. It sounds good, but they don't know much about it. Very often there are a few um, new courses, namely um, media studies, computer science, and health and social care business. Um, these are courses they haven't done before or haven't had any knowledge of before and they like the sound of it. It's important that they know what the course entails and whether it's going to be suitable for them. So they need to do their research now. Pathways. There are four curriculum pathways. Um, I will allocate the pathways beginning of February. Um, they have not been allocated now, but I give people time to have a look at the actual pathways, have a look at the information on the website, have a look at the subject before submitting options. Um, we have had options submitted immediately before. There is no first come first serve basis, so we suggest taking the next couple of months to look into the courses before the options are submitted. The four pathways are K, which is the accelerated pathway, E, core pathway one, V, core pathway two, and I, core pathway three. I'll explain what those pathways mean. Um, each of those pathways is chosen based upon a student's ability and what we think um, will allow them to do the best they possibly can in their GCSEs. Students on the accelerated pathway will have increased time for studying single sciences and a slight reduction in time for English, maths and RA. How many lessons will there be? As you can see here, per fortnight, depending upon the pathway, they get eight or nine English, seven or eight maths, five for the French or German, four for PE, three or four RA, nine for combined science or 12 for triple science and one for tutor period. They then get five lessons for each of their option subjects. The K pathway, you will see they do single sciences, so they do biology, chemistry and physics. They then have to do a language and then they get two free options. On the E pathway, they do combined science. This equates to two GCSEs. They now have to do a language and get two further options. The V pathway, slightly more adapted, they still do the combined science with the two GCSEs, but then they get a fixed option. From this, they can choose French, German, history, or geography. They then get two further options beyond this. On the I pathway, we have not put any restrictions on the options. This is where a student may be finding some um, qualifications difficult, um, send students very often are on this pathway and we see that restricting any of the options wouldn't be appropriate so we give them three complete flexibility over those three options. Languages are compulsory. Um, the languages are already chosen in year eight. Um, there are a portion of students that don't do a language but those are chosen on students that are struggling with a language lower down the school. Um, and everything is based upon what we see across Key Stage 3 and that's how it is planned. Science. As mentioned previously, there are two pathways um, for the science. The K pathway, they do triple science. This is the three separate GCSEs and they get two exam papers in each discipline. The um, E, V and I pathway, they do combined science. This is two GCSEs. They do six papers in total and the format is the same as a triple and the content is slimmed down. Both the triple and the double science can lead to A-level biology, chemistry, physics or medical science. There is not a restriction here. It's going to be based upon the grade they get as opposed to being whether they've done triple or combined. GCSE RE. All students complete a full course of RE. Um, they are religious studies but it covers philosophy and applied ethics as well. Um, those on the accelerated pathway will cover the content in three lessons a fortnight, those on the other pathways um, over four lessons a fortnight. They have started this course in year nine, so this is not something that's new to them when they come to year ten. Choices then. They have two further choices for majority of students from a wide range of subjects. Things to note, on the options preference form, students should make sure they list their choices in order of preference. This will be because the first choice would be the main one, so if there is any conflict on courses as to where they exist on the timetable, they can't do two courses, we'll choose the first preference as the one that we would continue with and then we'd look for a different option for the second or third. Um, they must also choose two reserves as we can't guarantee places on courses. This is purely due to timetabling and how the courses fit into the timetable. We do our best to maximise um, opportunity for students but we just can't make guaranteed. Please note courses are not filled on a first come first serve basis. If the options are submitted um, 
next week or they are submitted on the day of the um, deadline and um, those students will not be put in any sort of first come first serve basis they will all be mixed up when I start to put them together to the timetable. The only case where there may be any sense of first come first serve will be if options are submitted beyond the deadline when I've already started working on putting those option blocks together. So the additional level two courses, these are the option subjects that students would have. Um, there are quite a few of them. Uh, the information for this is all on the website. If you want some more information, there are videos from the staff and the options booklet is there with written details of what GCSE or um, level two qualification it is that they're covering. Students can choose to do two languages if they so wish. Um, and that would be tr the second choice would go on that options form. All option classes are mixed ability and the students cross the pathways are mixing these classes. They are not kept within their pathway. For example, students that are on the I-pathway will be doing their options choices with students on the K-pathway. There is no sense that they're being um, put on a separate um, sort of separate classes for these subjects. To get more information, there's plenty of information on the website. I've tried to be as exhaustive as I possibly can with that information. There are videos on the website giving details of the subject courses. Um, and if you want more information about your child, then the parents even appointments would be a really good time to find out more information. You'll notice that not all the courses are GCSEs. We do do BTECs in Health and Social Care and in Performing Arts. These are Level 1-2 courses and equivalent to GCSE. Um, there is no sense of them being um, any different, they're treated exactly the same way and um, although they're not scored on a 9 to 1 basis, there are equivalents. We also do a Microsoft Office Specialist Certification. This is done in after school lessons um, in six week programmes um, and would be really good for as many students as possible to get involved in because it is a recognised qualification as they move forward. The EBAC. You'll hear talk of this within the media. It's not an overarching qualification. They do not get any kind of certificate, um, but it is recognised by universities um, when students take the subjects that are listed below. So that's English, Maths, Two Sciences, History of Geography and a Modern Foreign Language. Um, there is less talk about it recently, but this may come back to the forefront. It came from universities saying when students have got this um, mix of subjects they tended to really set themselves up well for university other than that they don't have to cover those subjects. Attainment A and Progress A it's a measure of our school performance effectively. Um, what it is is you take eight subjects um, and you find an average from them. So English and maths are double weighted so effectively you've got English um, whatever the grade they get, they times that by two, maths times that by two, then add three EBAC qualifications and then they add three, o um, three of the open group qualifications and then they divide by ten to find that average. Um, this is how we are judged and the progress act is a measure of progress of students for schools. It's not something the students need to worry about particularly, they just need to worry about maximising their grade across the subjects that they get. Age of participation is just put in here to remind you that students do have to continue in education until their 18th birthday. Um, this, what the education looks like can be very different though. They can stay in school and do six forms they wish. Um, they can do apprenticeships. They can do part-time education or training. Um, they can do volunteering with some educational aspect to it. Um, if students do not pass their maths or English at grade 4 or above though, they do have to continue to do that until that 18th birthday too. What is the process then for completing the options? Preference forms are completed online. Um, if you click on the website and look at the option stuff, you'll see a, a, a link right at the top of the um, web page. They need to be su submitted by the end of the day on the 6th of March. I will not look at those options before that point, so as I say, no first come, first serve. The option blocks then will be drawn up by myself in response to their choices. Um, if there's any issues with any of these choices, we will consult with both the students and with yourselves in letter, explaining the process to do any changes. Um, any changes to preferences will be confirmed in writing, and then June 
we'll draw the final groups together and the list will be created of students and the students can find out and confirm then what options they'll be doing in year 10. We do recommend they get the choices right first time. This is why it's so imperative that they speak to yourselves, to teachers, to their tutors, to get as much information as they possibly can because there won't be any changes in September. So it's really important that they get these right. What do they need then? They need to make the right choice for them. They need a desire to want to do well, excellent attendance, regular and consistent effort in NEA, coursework and examinations, um, this is what's going to maximise their results at the end of Key Stage 4. So if they need further careers advice, Miss Baker is on hand. As they go into Key Stage 4, they will get a designated careers appointment where they get to talk, talk about the future and about what they do might do moving forwards. There are a few websites, so um, Decision Making Skills, Which Way Now, Fast Tomato, Kudos. Some of these are password um, protected, but we, we do have the information for that in school. Others of them, if you type them into Google, you'll find those different web pages um, and they might be of interest to you. Um, so to wrap this up then, um, if they do have further questions, which we would expect they would have, please can they speak to their form tutor, subject teacher, Mr Tizard, the achievement leader, Miss Baker, careers or myself. Um, please do make as many conversations as possible, have as many conversations as possible to be able to get as much information as possible. More information is available on the website. The preference form is on the website as well and a link to the online process is in the front of the website. Um, and useful websites, there are a few here about careers and about subjects that might fit with certain careers. So if you do want to have a look and investigate further, these might be useful to look at. Thank you for listening um, and I hope you found this useful.